Man. Everybody doing good today? It's good to be back with you. Thank you for your prayers. My family really appreciated that. Sorry I was gone last week, but it's one of those things that God just sends your way and you got to deal with it. So thank you for, for being a, a good, a, my good family, my good church, my brothers and my sisters. Amen. So uh, it kind of reminded me of this little, a little humorous thing. There was a man who died and his wife... Um, his, his, her, his wife, her husband died, and he left him, he left her. Let me start again. Hey, how y'all doing this morning? <laughs> you like to laugh at me, don't you? I know you people. This man died, and his, he left his wife $20,000. And um, a few weeks later, she was talking with a friend, and the lady, the wife said, you know, I am broke. She says, you're broke. Your husband left you $20,000. What'd you, what'd you do? What'd you spend it on? And she says, well, I spent $5,000 on the funeral and I spent $15,000 on the memorial stone. And the lady said, or the man said, or her friend said, what, what, what kind of a what stone? More and more, it must have been a pretty nice stone. And she said, yeah, look, three and a half carats. <laughs> All right. We've been talking about James. We've been talking about the book of James about how to make it through trials and, and to persevere, to get through difficult times, to put our faith into action. You know, you have faith in your life. You know, it's, it's trusting in God. It's believing what you don't see. We talked about faith. We talked about faith without works is dead faith. We talked about the importance of applying faith in your life. You don't just have faith to hold on to it. You have faith to use it. Amen? So we've been talking about that. We talked about how important it was to show others in the world our faith. Like for instance, we have to guard what we say. We have to harness this thing called the tongue, right? Because it can get us into trouble. We talked about, about being slow to speak and, and slow to anger. And we've been talking about this blueprint for our faith. It's kind of like I started this series off talking about building something. And when you build something, before you build it, you, you, you put it out on a, on a draft. You create a blueprint. You, you write it out. You lay it out. You see it before it's even built. That's the cool thing about it. And for your life, you have to look ahead. Listen to me. You have to look ahead and you have to see what your life, what God wants your life to be as you're building it. Sometimes we make the mistake of, okay, God, what are you going to do in my life today? And we're so myopic. We sort of just think, okay, God, just, 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 I'm right here. But God wants us to think about what he's making us and what we're becoming in our Christian life. He wants us to see one day that we're, we're growing and we're, we're, we're mature believers. That we leave elementary things and we grow up in our faith. No matter wherever you're at in your relationship and your walk with God. If you're just a new believer or if you're far down the road. You know, I want you to, to begin to kind of think about the blueprint of your life. And at the heart of the blueprint is your faith. Am I making sense? Okay, good. This side said I'm making sense. This side's looking at me like, you lost me at three and a half carats. I'm not telling. <laughs> so James is telling us about putting our faith into action. Next week, I'm going to talk to you about prayer. I've talked to you about prayer before. I've preached a zillion sermons on prayer. But I don't think I'm any more excited about my, my message next week about the importance of praying and tying all this this growing up in your faith, in my faith, with prayer. So I'm excited about that. Today I'm going to talk to you about a topic that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody does. Nobody likes to talk about patience. They don't. Now even when I say that word, a lot of you right now are looking at the back door. When can I get, you know, I want the back door. I come over to, uh, um, at the hospice, there's a building that's just filled with nurses and people that are working in our, our facility. And when I come over, I, I walk over sometimes when it's kind of, when it's kind of quiet. And I walk in, and, and I'm, I'm energetic most days anyways. I don't walk in with, you know, a downness. I, I try to walk in, especially at 8 o'clock in the morning after one cup of coffee. I'm in pretty good shape. Right? So I walk over and I go, hey, it seems kind of quiet today. You ever do that in that? 
if you use the word quiet around nurses, they'll curse you out right there to your face. <laughs> Throw you out. And I'm like, I'm the chaplain. You can't say that to me. You know, they're, up, they're upset. They're like, why did you say the word quiet? Now it's just all going to get busy for us. So I go, quiet, quiet, quiet. Because I like it when we're busy. When I say the word patience, people say, oh, you shouldn't pray for patience. Because then God's going to send you all kinds of circumstances into your life that's going to make you grow and learn to be patient. Am I not right about that? I want to tell you what. Who told you that? That's the worst advice that you could ever receive when it comes to patience. You should go around saying, patience, 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 patience. And, and say to God, God, give me patience. God, I'm praying for patience. God, even send me circumstances into my life that grow my patience. Because otherwise, you're going to have thin patience. Now, that may not be what you wanted to hear in church today, but that's true. Look what James says. I love what James says. We get to James chapter 5, and we get in verse 7. And, and it says this. Now, you got to watch this today. This is going to be a message that I think is going to help every single, every single one of you. I'm excited about it. James says this. And you remember, he's writing to the church that's scattered around the world. You know, they're going through persecution. We're studying the book of Acts on Sunday mornings at 9. And, and that's a great place. We're, not, we're only just part way through, so come on and join us. But the church is being persecuted. Paul's being persecuted. Peter's been persecuted. James has been executed. Stephen's been martyred. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that's happening. But as the church is being persecuted, it's catching on fire. And it's just growing. And persecution's not a bad thing. Somebody say amen real quiet. Amen. And James is saying to the believers who are scattered around the world, look, even though you're going through tough times, look what he says. Verse 5. Verse 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. The return of Jesus is what he's talking about. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Verse 10, brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Would you say that line with me? The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Okay? So, James is telling us that we should pray and develop our patience. We should build with the end in mind. He says, I want you to think about a farmer. Now, I used to work on a farm. And it was one of the best times of my life. It was one of the most difficult times of my life because you had to pick stones, bale hay, milk cows, haul wagons, go up and down a silo, you know, climb 90 feet. I was not a very old, uh, I, was, I was a young man. I was 13, 14, 15 years old. But I was able to, to kind of get the whole farming picture. And this is what a farmer does. In the spring he goes out and he plows his fields. And then he picks some stones and then he gets some seed. And, and, and my farm was, uh, the farm I worked on was a large, huge farm. And we would get seeds and then we would put the seeds in the planters and the fertilizer. We'd mix it in or come back and fertilize it. And we would plant the seeds and, and, and then we would wait. Because things just don't grow up overnight. You know that, right? Some of you planted your gardens and they're starting to grow. And, and you know, you just don't go out. I can't even harvest some of my garden that I have at home right now because there's just little bitty green tomatoes on there. And I'm waiting. Because one day I'm going to go out. It's going to be a big red tomato. And I'm going to eat that. And it's going to make me happy. 
And, and that's the way it is. James says, look at the farmer. He plants and then he waits. You know, God sends the rain. And it grows. And then at just the right time, there's this harvest. So James says, you know, think about the farmer. And in, in fact, it says, he says, wait patiently as you are ready for the Lord to come back again. I got to tell you something. One of the most exciting teachings in all the Bible is the return of Jesus. I thought about bringing my sunglasses in and putting them on here. But, but if, I, if, I could, if I could just kind of get you to think about this. If you could put on the lens of the second coming of Jesus and look around at life with that with those, the second coming of Jesus glasses on. And if you would view everything that you and I come in contact with, every situation, every problem, every trial, every temptation, if you could look through the lens of the return of Jesus, you would look through life in a totally different way. And I want to encourage you to do that. James says that. He says, be patient and remember that the Lord is coming. That's a huge teaching in our church. We talk about that all the time. In fact, some of you are thinking about, you know, don't you talk about anything else? No, we're going to keep talking about that. Because he is coming again. And that's the exactly what, what, how we need to, to focus and to filter everything through that. It won't be long. I believe that with all my heart. Somebody say amen. amen. Waiting is an important thing to the farmer. Waiting is important. I've learned... That God doesn't do things on my timetable. I have learned that in my life. I have learned that when I say the words, hurry up God, God says, you don't know me very well. I've learned that God does things perfectly in his timetable and hurry and worry rhyme together. And I got to tell you, God says to me so many times, like that video we watched, he says, wait Wait. Wait is a four-letter word. Now, most four-letter words we think are bad, right? Wait is a good four-letter word. In the scripture, James says, think about the prophets. Now, the prophets, you know, Ezekiel and Daniel and Obadiah and, 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 and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Micah and Malachi and all those prophets prophets all the way back even Moses was a prophet and and Daniel all these prophets they would get a word from God Elijah Elisha they would wait for a word from God and then they would take that word to the people and they would say thus saith the Lord and the people generally said we don't want to hear this we don't want to hear what God has to say because we know, you know, he's going to make us change and we just want to do our own thing. But God would often send the prophets and this is what they would do to the prophets. Sometimes they would kill them. Sometimes they would throw them out of town. And the prophets, you know what they did? They went away from the people. They heard from God. They brought the message back. They went away from the people. They heard from God. They brought the message back. The prophets were persecuted tremendously and many times. Consider the prophets when you think about patience and perseverance. Think about the farmer. And then he says, think about Job. Oh my gosh. When's the last time you looked in the book of Job? Most of you are afraid to turn to the book of Job. Because you're afraid that, you know, if I'm reading about the book of Job, then I'm getting prepared for bad things to come into my life. That's not the way it goes. This book is written... So much of it is the example and lives of people who learn the lessons from God. And they're for us. Job is one of them. Job, you know the story of Job probably. Satan came up to, to God and said, I, I want to, you know, I want to get your servant Job. And, and God sort of allowed Satan into his life. And the next thing you know, you're reading around in the... In the Bible, in the book of Job, Job loses his family. He loses his wealth. He loses his position. He loses even his health. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, this Job had a pretty tough time. 
But then we read on further because Job persevered and James reminds us with patience he didn't fall away from God. He trusted God. He kept his eyes on God. He believed that God was going to restore him and God did. God gave back Job twice as much as he had before. Now yeah, it was tough. It was tough, unbelievably tough. But James reminds us, think about Job, think about the farmer, think about the prophets, and remember that Jesus is coming. And then he says, have patience. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Patience is that thing that we ask for from God because it's a fruit. It, the closer you are to God, the more fruit you have in your life, the more spirit that you have in your life. And you pray and you ask God to fill you with his spirit. And having patience is one of those fruits. I want to encourage you to pray for patience. A lot of you are like, that would be opposite of what I pray. Pray for patience. I believe that that is super, super, super important. I've learned that just because you don't see a way doesn't mean that God doesn't have a way. I've learned that just because you and I don't see a way doesn't mean that in God's time, He's going to have a way. I, I believe that, that James said, he said another couple of things. He said, be patient, stand firm, and don't grumble. That's not a very... It's not a very popular word we use a lot of days. Grumble. We used to use it more. We don't use it much anymore. Grumble. Now we say words like whine and complain and, you know, things like that. But grumble. Grumble. Some of you are expert grumblers, aren't you? I know at times I have, my, I have my moments where I grumble. Grumble is... I looked it up in the dictionary. It's to complain or protest about something in a bad-tempered way. Rawr, rawr, rawr. How come it's raining? How come there's traffic? How come God hasn't answered my prayer? And you may not be saying it, but you're thinking it. James says, don't grumble. In fact, he says, be patient. Patience, defined, is the capacity to accept, delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. So instead of grumbling, we're patient. Consider what, what Job is saying to us here. You know, and then it says, be careful because God will, he, he's going to judge us. God's going to judge us. The judge is standing at the door. We read that. And I thought God was in, I don't think we're supposed to judge people. That's what we hear a lot, right? We shouldn't judge people. God, God's a loving God. He's got a grace. I'm going to tell you something. God is a judging God. He will judge us. If I'm, a, if I'm a grumbler today, and if I'm not patient, if I'm not, if I'm not in step with God, waiting on God, God looks at me and he says, Dave, knock it off. Some of you need to hear this message. I'm telling you. Be patient. Don't grumble. Hmm. Job, the prophets, the farmer. I want you to look at this scripture with me. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 through 11 and 12. It says this. Some of you who are patient, some of you who are, are on track, who are trusting God, waiting on God, look what Hebrews says. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love that you've shown him as you help his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to, to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate, imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Through faith and patience. See, faith and patience work together. <laughs> Faith and patience are the, the, the two ingredients that, that work together to help us build the kind of life that God wants us to be and have. Faith and patience. Don't grumble. Be patient. I think I'm going to write a song that says, Don't grumble, be patient. Really. So, I want to put some meat on these, this scripture that, that James... In fact, I could just leave it and say, There, go do that. 
But I thought a little bit more about it. I thought a little bit more about what James is saying and how that applies to us. So give me just a couple more minutes and I want you to know how to, to apply this into your life. If you're ready, say amen. amen. There's only one way to be patient and that's to wait actively on God. You know, there's things in my life right now that I'm waiting for. Some of you are waiting for things. Some of you are waiting for that right job. Some of you are waiting for the break to come. Some of you are waiting for that raise. Some of you are waiting for your health report to get better. Some of you are waiting for your financial difficulty to get better. Some of you are waiting for your legal battle to get better. Some of you are waiting for your child to get it together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some of you are waiting for your spouse to come around. Amen to that. Some of you are waiting for your coworker to start treating you better. Some of you are waiting for, for something in your life. We're all waiting for something. We really are. David said this, wonderful scripture. He said, every morning that I bring my request to you, O God, I wait expectantly. What a good scripture. Every morning, David was diligent. He brought his request to God and he waited expectantly for God. You and I are in a patient mode most days. Embrace it. Trust God and wait expectantly because God is going to make way. I believe that. Now, I'm not some, you know you know, positive thinker that thinks above the scripture. But when you read the scripture, the scripture over and again and again and again and again says, while you wait, be positive, trusting in God. God sometimes takes our faith. You know, I love the scripture. When, when the, 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 the men lowered the man down through the roof and Jesus is is preaching and the, the roof opens and the dust comes down and Jesus looks and this man is is being lowered down right in front of him and the scripture says this when Jesus saw their faith I want you to know something that tells me that when when God and Jesus is sitting on his right hand when they see your faith that makes a difference Whatever you're waiting on today, oh, I know everybody's waiting on something. I know you've been praying about something. I know you've been trusting God for something. I talk to you, the, one of the first things out of your mouth will be things like, well, I'm hoping and I'm waiting and I'm waiting for this and I'm praying for that. I'm not sure what God's doing. We're all in waiting mode. I want you to wait with faith to know that God is going to do something in your life. But Paul is in church. Or, I'm sorry, he's in prison. We're in church. Paul's in prison. And he's writing to Philemon. And he's in prison. He has every reason to be discouraged and to think that that's the end and he's not going to get out of prison. And, and he, he, it's the end for him. He has every reason to think that. But this is what he says. He says to Philemon, prepare a room for me because I hope to come to you soon. You think, well, what does that mean? It means Paul had hope and faith while he was in prison that he was going to get out and go see his friend again. Some of you have like given up. The devil comes and says to you, you know, you might as well prepare for your funeral. But God says, no, prepare for your life. There was a man I heard about, he had surgery and, and he was having heart surgery. And his wife brought him to the hospital his pajamas and his slippers. And he looked at them and he said, you know, what are those for? And she said, as you recover here in the hospital, you know, they're your pajamas and your slippers. And he said, I want you to go home and I want you to bring my running suit and my tennis shoes. She's like, what? And he said, I want to put those right over there. I want to look at those running shoes because one day... I'm going to be running again. Now you might think, 
What does that got to do with anything? It has a lot to do with everything. Because inside of you right now, you either have active faith and you're waiting patiently for God or you're giving up. Don't give up. God has the right person, the right job, the right situation. God is bringing something and some things into your life at just the right time. So don't give up. Wait patiently. Think about the farmer. Think about Job. Think about the prophets. Think about that Jesus is coming again. Actively wait in whatever you're doing because Jesus wants us to wait patiently as we wait for him. I think that's right. And it's my sermon, so I think it's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Look at Psalm 40. The psalmist says this, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. Some of you need that every day. You need to read that one every day. I am waiting patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. Cry out to him. He hears you. He just, just wait patiently for him. I love this word, soon. It's one of my favorite words. Soon. Some of you need to say, when's my job, you know, coming? The answer is soon. When, when am I going to find that person in my life that God wants me to be with the rest of my life? The answer is what? Soon. When am I going to get out of this job into that job that pays me better? Let me hear it. Soon. Yeah. When am I going to, um, you know, get what God wants me to have and when I trust him? The answer is soon. Don't give up hope. I love the story of a, of a town they were in a drought. It's a small town. They were in a drought. They hadn't rained for, for, for months. And the pastors of the town decided to get the people together. And they were going to pray for rain. And so they began to tell everybody, we want you to come at this particular time. And we want you to bring one object that just sort of says to God, God, we're trusting you for rain. And this town needed rain badly. So they, they set an appointed time and all of the people of the town came. It was a small town. Everybody knew everybody. And people came to this one special spot. Some people had Bibles. Some people had crosses. Some people wore their favorite Christian t-shirt. And they got together and, and they, they held hands and they prayed that God would send them rain. And about 10 minutes into their prayer, it began to rain. People were excited and they were lifting up their Bibles and they were lifting up their crosses and they were saying, thank you God. But there was one little girl who when you looked over at her item, it was an item of faith. It was a big yellow umbrella. She opened up that umbrella. I mean, if you're praying for rain, you better bring an umbrella. Amen? Amen. Some of you today, you're just not, you're just not patient. You're not, you're, not, you're not trusting God. You're not waiting. You think God has left you. You think God doesn't care. That is not true at all. You want to be a witness for the gospel? You want people to, to look at you and say, what's, what, what's in you? You know, what is it about you? This, this Jesus guy's got a hold of you. This kingdom message that you, you proclaiming, it, it's, it changes you. This hope you have in the return of Jesus, there's something about you. You're, you're, you're a, you're a, you're a fruitcake. But I want what you have. I want what you have. Christianity is, man, it's not a downer. The devil wants you to say, plan for your funeral. Jesus says, plan for your life. And while we wait... Wait patiently. Some people call, tell you, you know, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to get out of debt. You're never going to find the right person. You're never going to, you know, don't believe those never lies. Don't believe them. God's got something bigger and better for you. Wait expectantly. <laughs> You know, I am, I am, God, I, I, my life, I'm going to tell you about my life for a second. We don't have much time. It's not that exciting anyways. There was a time in my life where I felt like just about everything had been taken away from me. 
It's true. I lost my family, lost my church, lost, you know, a lot of my relationships. It was just like a truck came and ran over me. You ever been there? Yeah. yeah. Someone came up to me, and I tell this story, so this is not a new story. Someone came up to me, a, f a friend's wife, a faithful man. His wife came up to me. She never said boo to me, hardly ever. She walked up to me and said, Dave, I got to tell you something. I had a dream about you. And I'm like, okay, this will be interesting, right? She said, I dream that God gave you back twice as much as you've lost. Now, I, I don't always believe people who come up to me and say they had a dream. In fact, a lot of times I go the other way. But this dream, you know what I did? I said, I accept that blessing right there. I'll take it. And you know what? He has. He has. He's given me back twice as much as I ever had before. Am I saying that could happen for you? I am. I am. Am I saying that it's going to happen just the way you think it's supposed to happen? I'm not. It happened for Job. Job got back double. Some of you are in the bottom and you're thinking, where is God? God is right there with you. I believe it. He's got things in store for you. Trust him. Wait on him. Wait patiently for him. Don't misread what I'm saying. I'm saying, don't think negatively. That's not faith. James says, wait patiently. Trust God. Persevere. He's going to be with you. You just got to show him that you're with him too. Soon. Soon is a good word. If you're praying for rain, bring an umbrella. Amen? Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. God has good things in store for you. That's, that's the message. That's one of the awesome messages of the Bible. One day Jesus is going to come back again. He's going to establish, he's going to establish his kingdom on this earth. He's going to sit on David's throne. He's going to rule and reign. And he's going to look at you and he's going to say, this is the job I've got for you now. This is the assignment. And you're going to be standing in an immortal body. And you're going to say, yes sir, whatever you have for me. You put me wherever you want me to go. I'm your, you're my king. I chose you back in 2000 or 19 something and this is what I've been waiting for. And you're going to rule and you're going to reign with him. And I want to tell you what, that's worth waiting for. This is temporary. There'll be a day, no more death, no more tears, no more sorrow. You know, it's going to be incredible. This is temporary. Wait patiently. Wait expectantly. There's going to be a harvest in your fields. I believe it. I believe it. What do you want me to preach to you? Oh, let's just hold on till Jesus comes. <laughs> just a few more, just a few more weary hours. No! Let's be ready when he comes. Let's be actively waiting. Let's be, let's be engaged. Say, Lord, you know what? I got faith in you. I don't see it. I don't see it in with my eyes, but I see it in my heart. I don't, I, I can't, I can't, I don't know what you got in store for me, God, but it's, you know what, I believe. I believe you're going to restore my, my marriage, give me a job that you want me to be in. I want you to restore my finances. If you're in debt, I want to tell you what, if you're in debt and you like being there, then you're going to stay there. God doesn't want us there. Our church is in debt. You know what? We're about to get out of debt. I don't know how yet, but we're about to get out of debt. Soon. Yeah, that's, you know, we're working on a, on a we love God, love people. We're working on a new vision statement. That vision statement is going to be like loving people to life. Kingdom life, eternal life, abundant life. We're working on that. But you know what? We're going to put in parentheses, soon. That's our word. Be patient. Actively wait. God is working. Let him see that you're waiting in faith. Somebody say amen. 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 Worship team, come up and sing with us today.